For coordinates question, if you don't draw approximate position, it's difficult for you to think is there any finding or something else. So very important when you find out two points, negative 12, 10, we go left by 12 and then we go up by 10. So maybe it's approximate here. And label is at M. After that, we have another point, 36, and then we go up 10. Go right by 36, and then we go up by 10. So it's approximately here. One thing very important, we are talking about the same horizontal line. So that means because they have the same height, they are at the same level. And then there is a circle called C, and then with a center G. And we just know that the height of the point G, the center is negative 8. So most probably may be somewhere here with the height negative 8. If we draw a circle pass through two points and also center at G, maybe most probably it's look like this. So this is point G. Now the problem is we don't know what is the left right position. We just know about the height. So while wow, this one is uh, negative 8 here. Uh, most general situation is some student let the center be x negative 8 because only the x coordinate is unknown and then we use the property of center that means uh, the distance between m and g and the distance between n and g are the same they try to say that these two distances are the same which is the radius so they can write mg is equal to ng and then they use the distance formula so something square plus something square, square root is equal to square root something square plus something square. While the x difference is uh, 10 minus negative 8, so we have 10 minus negative 8 here. And then the x difference is h minus uh, negative 12 of negative 12 minus h. So right hand side are the same, we just simply use 36 minus h. And then also uh, we use 10 minus negative 8. If you solve this one, you expand it, you will get the equation of x, then you can solve the value of x here. But it's a little bit too stupid. Basically, when we find the chord, which is horizontal line, and also you know that the perpendicular bisector of the chord will pass through the center. So basically, because it's symmetric, so it's just simply the midpoint between negative 12 and 36. So this is just simply 12. You just add them together, divide by 2, you get x already. So a quick method is you can let uh, g be h negative 8 and then you say that h is equal to negative 12 together with 36 get the average so we have 12 and therefore we already have the center g is 12 negative 8. After we have the center everything are just the same we have our general point x y here and then we have the radius. We get the radius first uh, by using the distance formula that we did just now, negative 12 minus 12 square and then plus uh, 10 minus negative 8 square. Or very straightforward is the width here is 24. The height difference here is 18, so 3 to 4 to 5 is obviously 5 times 6, 30. So you get 30 here. So for the equation of circle, just any point to the center, the distance is fixed it to be 30. So we write down x minus 12 squared together with y minus negative 8, that means y plus 8 bracket squared is equal to 30 squared. Within two minutes, you should already get the answer of part A. If you remember this property, perpendicular bisector will pass through the center. Continue to solve the questions. Uh, the straight line L1 pass through N and also G here. So we just simply draw a straight line. And also make sure you label the line. This is called L1. Uh, you have two points on this straight line. So if you want, you can get the equation of this line. You can get the slope, you can get whatever you want. So after that, we are going to let another straight line L2 parallel to L1. So maybe parallel line here, maybe parallel line here. Let's see what happens next. Uh, P is a moving point in a rectangular plane such that the perpendicular distance from P to L1 is equal to perpendicular distance from P to L2. 
So in case that L2 is like this, then there is a locus of P, which is in the middle of that two line. So it's quite straightforward in the middle, which means that it must lie on the middle parallel lines. Then our uh, inverted L may be like this. But there's some additional information is the inverted L that means this locus is passed through this point. So we have to shift up a little bit. Inverted L like this. And also, uh, so the blue line will shift further later. To ensure that the distance here and the distance here are the same, which means the middle. B1, geometric relationship between inverted L and also L1 Brodfish, just simply parallel. That's all. So we are going to find the equation of inverted L. Uh, we know it's passed through a certain point. We also able to get the slope because uh, we know everything for L1 here. So our strategy get the slope L1, which means it's equal to the slope of inverted L. Together with the point, we can get the equation of inverted L here. So by two given points, to get the slope of L1, Go right by how many and then go up by how many? Go right by 24 and then go up by 18. So the vertical distance here is 18, while the horizontal distance here is 24. To get the slope, it's just simply 18 divided by 24. Or you just simply strictly follow the formula. Uh, 10 minus negative 8 over 36 minus 12. So we also have 18 divided by 24, which is 3 over 4 after we simplify which means that the slope of inverted L are the same. So we write down since inverted L parallel to L1. So slope of inverted L is also equal to 3 over 4. Afterward, we use our channel point x, y, and the criteria for straight line is slope equal to slope. So slope in left-hand side is y minus 10 expressed in terms of x, y. y minus 10 over x plus 12 should equal to the slope that we already confirmed, 3 over 4. So basically, that's the equation of inverted L already. We just have to tidy up. So if you use the general form, is equal to 3x minus 4y and then plus 76. And you should place x and y in left-hand side. So we just copy down once again. Uh, we finished part B2, now B3. Uh, inverted L here can see at another point, that point called Q. It's obvious uh, because uh, it's not easy for L to be tangent. So uh, from my graph here, it cuts through this point. So we have a point Q here. And then what is the criteria is someone claimed that angle QGN. We connect Q and G, so Q, G, N is referred to this angle. This angle is our target. We want to know is this angle larger than 72 degree or not. Uh, if you don't draw the graph, the calculation will become much more difficult, but if you draw it like this, uh, it's quite easy to handle. One of the key points of uh, coordinate planes is we can get horizontal distance and also vertical distance very easily. So we are going to construct the vertical distance from Q to G. And also we do the same for from point N to G here. We know pretty much about this red triangle here is because we just discussed that the vertical difference is 18 while the horizontal distance is 24. So by using tangent opposite to the adjacent side, then we can find out this part angle. Maybe I call this theta 1. And similar reason, if we can get the coordinate of Q, we get the vertical distance, we get the horizontal difference. We also get theta 2. Then to get our target, we just simply use our adjacent angle on straight line. 180 subtract these two, we get the rest. And then we can compare with 72 degrees. Now the problem is I need the coordinates of Q. Q is the point of intersection between line L, that means this equation, and the equation of circle. You just solve the simultaneous equation, you can get the position of Q, and therefore you can use the method that we just mentioned. Uh, this is the first method. The second method is, is really difficult for you to think. Uh, we are going to from point Q and point N converge to point M. 
so we have the angle at circumference we can also get angle at center so therefore if you are able to use the slope of this line and also get the angle of elevation so together with uh, 90 degrees subtract it and then you plus 90 degrees to get this angle times 2 you get angle at center and then because angles at the point so your target uh, angle QGN is just 360 degrees subtract that then you get the answer this is much more convenient but uh, you know in the exam setting it's difficult for you to think about this kind of creative method so we try to demonstrate the simultaneous uh, method to get the coordinates of Q so 3x minus 4y plus 76 is equal to 0 so we have x is equal to 4y minus 76 divided by 3 if we plug it inside then we have 4y minus 76 over 3 minus 12 square plus y plus a squared equal to 900 uh, we find now that only y in this uh, equation so we can easily solve it but I really hate those fractions so in order to remove those fractions I decided to both sides times 9 or every term times 9 uh, to remove the denominator so what when you put inside the square uh, this 9 will become 3 times so it's become 4y minus 76 minus 36 So it's become 4y minus 112 square plus 9 times of and we just simply uh, expand it, find out the value of y. So tidy up like this, combine the like terms. So we use formula 1, we get y equal to 20.08 or y is equal to 10. So it support our finding because one of the point of intersection is 10, uh, the y coordinate is 10. So we get the corresponding x coordinates. Uh, of course you are going to substitute into this equation so therefore we have x is equal to 4 times 20.08 we get x equal to 1.44 so the point q is 1.44 and also 20.08 now we are going to get theta 2 because we know that it should be left hand side of our point g so it's very convenient for us to get this one and know the negative side, something like that. So uh, the vertical difference is 20.08 subtract negative 8. So the distance here is 28 something. Uh, you'll find it a little bit strange because 1.44 should be right hand side of point M. It's because uh, this line is uh, in the view scale is a little bit fatter than this one. Anyway, no effect at all. For the vertical difference is 20.08 subtract negative 8, that means plus 8 here. And then for the horizontal difference is just 12 minus 1.44. And to get uh, theta 2, we are talking about theta, uh, tension theta 2. Opposite to the adjacent, we have 28.08 divided by 12 minus 1.44 which is 10.56 so theta 2 is 69 point something so afterward we just do the same for theta 1 so tangent theta 1 is your opposite is 18 over adjacent 24 theta 1 is us tangent 3 over 4 so 36 point something and then it's come to the final step to get our target angle QGN so we get this value and then compare with our target 72 is larger than 72 so do you agree the claim of course you agree the claim so uh one more method is you construct a straight line here so that you have the triangle you can get qg while the radius is just in p30 and 30 here so by using the coordinate of q and n you can get the distance q n here and then you can use the cosine formula because we are talking about we have three sides and together with one angles we can use cosine formula to get the angle which is the same 